Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. You asked for it. You asked for more cowbell. Well, we've got the cowbell in the house. Today, Jason Jones is going to be joining us. We're going to talk story with him about all the incredible ways that God is moving right now and how God's using him uh, in the Middle East and other places. I say go to the Middle East because at least then he's not bugging me all the time. But we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure and our good friend Jason Jones. Start ringing that cowbell. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. A couple days ago... Uh, if you here in Waikiki right now, I'm looking out my window. It's onshore winds, 30, 40 mile an hour gusts, walls of water, not the friendliest looking seas. And so we decided a few days ago, Cindy and I, to go out sailing. We took a little 20 foot, 20 foot uh, sailing sloop out, and Cindy was on the keel. And uh, as we left, uh, there was a little bit of wind, but it seemed to die down. Uh, but there was an outgoing uh, tide flowing out from the LOI <laughs> Yacht Harbor. As we approach this this place called Point Panic, you already get a, a picture of what it was like. There's waves breaking, and the spray was going as high as up over the uh, the seawall there. Off to the left, where there's usually surfers, there weren't hardly any surfers um, in a place called Alamoana Bulls, which it's so we have just this narrow cut to get through. And once we we started rolling out with Cindy uh, C- Cindy manning the keel, once you start rolling out of that that harbor you and and you get into a difficult situation it's not like you can turn around and go back uh, because that would definitely swamp the boat and so as we as we're going out past point panic cindy just 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 cool calm and collected just stayed the course worked her way through the waves the outgoing tide causes the incoming surf to break as if it's breaking on a shallow reef and so uh we had surf coming up over the bow and uh and it was pretty sketchy, but I was just so proud of her because she just stayed the course. I think a lot of us in our lives these days, we have those moments when we're, when we're sailing out past point panic. And uh, I think God, God's, uh, God's call to you is just to stay the course because what happened is once we got out past the point, we got into deep water. And in the deep water, the deeper water is calm. It doesn't have that, that shoreline and the, the agitation from the outgoing uh, uh, tidal current flowing out of the Alawai Canal. So in your life right now, if you're facing a real challenging times, just stay the course. Just stay the course. It's not a time to panic. It's a time to just stay the course and be confident that the Lord's with you. It's the same lesson the Lord taught his disciples uh, in the boat when they began to panic while he was sleeping. So just a message from the Lord. Faith does, does a lot of things. Faith leaps, but faith also rests. Faith has, uh, has those two elements, and sometimes it's just time to rest in the Lord and know that God's got it all in control. There's nothing going on in your life that doesn't surprise him, whether it's financial issues or medical issues or relationship issues or, or depression or whatever, whatever it is you're facing, maybe abusive situation. God has a way through out uh, for you if you just stay in the boat and don't panic. We have with us our, as our guest today um, Jason Jones, who's just just someone that, I mean, when my phone rings, I see it's Jason. I grab that phone because it's so rare that we get to talk. And he called me, I guess it was, I think it was last night or the night before. And I said, let's just, let's just do another radio interview. Let's get, instead of talking for an hour, let's just do it on, let's do it live on the microphone. So Jason Jones, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure starring Jason Jones. It's great to be on uh, the Jason Jones show with special guest Bear Wozniak. It's great, <laughs> it's great to have you on. Hey, I was editing, uh, editing long ride home you know the 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 hawaii season yeah. is is all edited now and my son is just going through and doing all the sound and color sweetening and you know as you all know since you're an award-winning film producer that that can be very involved to get everything cinematically correct but you were we you were talking story with doug barry and i on the cliff at uh below diamond head and you said something that was just really gnarly you talked about uh, a man who was distributing communion who had a mason's ring on. 
Yeah. And uh, and and how you stood how you stood uh, stood up and took care of that. And it was just riveting to me. Talk, talk story, and if you don't remember completely, I'll give you some hints. Oh, I remember what you had to say. No, I remember. Yeah. And uh, first of all, you know, I'm really nervous about when this season comes out because it's the end of my dignity as a man. I, I, this is, <laughs> That's <laughs> true. It's like, it's, uh, I thought being on a reality show on EWTN would preserve some of my dignity, but it, but uh, but I was wrong. Bear, I wanted to say something about what you said earlier. You know, one of the embarrassing things about uh, I hate this because I'm an atheist who became a convert well into adulthood, and I'm a poor example I don't, of a convert. And we don't know if, even if you're an adult yet, but go on. Yeah, exactly. And um, and as you are an adult convert, Revert, we, um, you know, we all go through things. And when you see Bear Wozniak or Scott Hahn or Taylor Marshall or whoever you see, these pu- quote-unquote public Catholics, um, it's a mistake to confuse – um, what you see and the the podcast or the TV show with the reality of what a human being is going through. Mm. And so don't think that those things that you mentioned, uh, depression and uh, dark nights of the soul Mother Teresa had for 50 years, that the books that you're reading or the podcasts that you're listening to, uh, that those folks aren't going through exactly the worst, the, the same things, the same struggles that you are. So I'm just, I'm glad you, you, you talked about that. And, um, and I just know for me, the past 18 months have been pretty rough just in the wake of the work I'm doing in Afghanistan. But I, I want to say this, that, uh, yeah, I was at mass, you know, and I went up to receive communion and a gentleman, I'll call him a gentleman, uh, Eucharistic minister had the Masonic ring. I'm a member of the Knights of the Immaculata, um, uh, an apostolate founded by St. Maximilian Colby for the conversion of Freemasons. I, I couldn't believe it. So I obviously I crossed my arms. And I, I waited to talk to him after mass and I was very respectful and, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of, uh, you know, there's a facade that I put on of civility um, that's really thin and it's not too hard to, to puncture it. And, and then everything falls apart. But I, I walked up to him very civil and I said, excuse me, um, sir, I, I noticed that you, I want to thank you for, you know, your commitment. To, I have never seen you miss mass and, and you're a Eucharistic minister, so thank you for your fidelity to our parish. And and I, I think you must not know this, but as a as a as a Freemason, um, you should not be presenting yourself to communion, and you really need to meet with our bishop, and and seek to reconcile yourself with the church. And he started out nice for about a second, and then he became very aggressive, and that's when it became pretty heated. And at the end, at the end of the conversation, he said, listen, the Masons say that I can be both. So I'm both. And I said, well, you know, that's OK for them to say that. Uh, but the church says you can't uh, receive communion as a Freemason. So uh, and, and it was a long process. The priest met with me and said he, he's promised not to wear his ring while distributing communion. I said, my problem isn't with jewelry. Um. And it took about two years before he was removed as a Eucharistic minister. It was a long process, and it was it was quite frustrating. We stopped going to that parish, but yeah, these are these little battles that you don't want, right? Where we go out with the church militants, and we go out into a sad and lonely and broken world, and we're sad and lonely and broken people, mm. and it is quite frustrating um, when we go to mass. And we see that um, the battle is right there sometimes. Well, there was, there was a, a statement that you made, I'm going to remind you of it, that I thought was so powerful. In fact, I quote it whenever I give up. I, I, I spoke the last couple of weeks, and I quote, I quoted, I, anybody here know Jason Jones? And they all go, ugh. No, they go, yes, we know. We love Jason Jones. <laughs> and I quote, I no, but I quoted you. You said something that the priest uh, came up to you, and t- you said, you know, you made – people feel really uncomfortable you made him feel really uncomfortable and then you made a statement about when a lion enters a room do you remember that statement you the statement was when a lion enters a room maybe you should feel uncomfortable and that god's calling us to be lions yeah I thought, yeah we don't want to be lions like i want to be a house cat right i i, I don't people think because i for whatever reason i don't ever by god's grace whether it was the first person in america being arrested leading protests against COVID policy or 
whether my organization taking responsibility for the evacuation of our Afghan allies and serving Christians in Afghanistan, and I'm still there. I don't choose to do these things. You know, uh, Fulton Sheen said that if you're doing something that you would choose not to do, you know, it's a calling. <laughs> and <laughs> Beautiful. I, yeah. I don't want to challenge a gentleman in front of his wife at mass because he's a Freemason or because he's a pro-abortion politician. I've done that as well. I, whenever a pro-abortion elected official comes in, I ask him not to receive communion, please. Uh, I don't want to do that, but I think it's important to do that. I think it's my obligation to do that. And um, and it's your and it's your. We got to take a break here, Jason. But yeah. it's your it's your nature as a man. It's your calling as a man to protect. Uh, Jason Jones, where can people find you? Well, the Jason Jones show. It's like the Bear Wozniak show, but it's very better. intelligent. <laughs> Only better. Yeah. It's like the Bear Wozniak show, but awesome. <laughs> and uh, and. Uh, uh, my website is thegreatcampaign.org, and our mission is to stand with the most vulnerable people in the world when the world has left. We'll and be I right. think that's mm. the Catholic apostolate. Beautiful. We'll be right back with my good friend Jason Jones. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue. Through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness, Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at Deep Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to Notre Dame fcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com, and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we have as our guest, Jason Jones. I want to remind everybody, something really cool is happening. We begin to develop... Uh, uh, a three-year curriculum called uh, the School of Manliness. Uh, we've had our man cave, and uh, uh, where where men from around the country, around the world, uh, it's like it's like a Facebook community, only it's not on Facebook. We've had that for a while, and then uh, we, Pat Gervais, my friend and I, we developed um, a three-year curriculum on manliness. The first year covers the virtues, and the second year. Uh, is kind of based on my new book that Sophia will be coming out with soon called 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? We have quotes from, we have short homilies from cow, Catholic uh, cowboy priest Father Bryce Lundgren in there, and we have some short segments from, from Daniel Markham. We have some written material from me, some, some, some media video. What it is, it's so cool because we have 36 lessons, and when you join the man cave, you become part of that Facebook community, that non-Facebook community. But then if we're on year one, like we're on year one, month uh, three right now, and uh, we just went through 
uh, month two, which was on, on forming your own creed and having your own code that you live by. And so it was actually, you work through writing that. And then towards the end of the month, we talk story together as men and go over that month's curriculum. But what's really exciting, what's really happening when I go out and speak now is I see more and more young men coming. Fathers are bringing, I'm going to these, speak at all these Catholic men's conferences. Fathers will bring their 12, 13, 14 year old sons to the events. And, uh, and more and more, I'm seeing these, the, the number of young men that are coming. And so the fathers use this curriculum uh, to lead their sons through this three-year curriculum on the School of Manliness. So it's, it, it's just really cool to see because a lot of times you ask your son, hey, what did you do at school today? He goes, nothing. What did you learn? Nothing. You know. But when you go through the School of Manliness, they watch episodes of Long Ride Home. They watch video. They read. And it allows you to engage with them and use that curriculum as a launching point for you to lead your son into manliness. And there's no one more manly than our guest today, Jason Jones. He's uh, He's actually a poster boy for manliness. I base all of my life, uh, all of my life, on lip wanting to be like Jason. Uh, and you guys asked for it I'm, on our last, the last time we had Jason on. I said, if you want more Jason Jones, just message in the in the YouTube version of the show. We want more cowbell. So here he is. He's back in the house. So J- Jason, you made. I want to do this. Talk a little bit more about this before we talk about what you're up to these days. About what it means to be a man in this area. When you said these words, the priest said you made him feel uncomfortable. And you said, well, you know, when a lion enters a room, maybe you should feel uncomfortable. Um, there is there is an element to being a man that means you need to be dangerous. People need to know that there's you're not looking for a fight, but there's a pay, place beyond which you won't be pushed. It doesn't necessarily mean a physical fight, although sometimes that can happen. Uh, what would you say to the young men out there about making a stand for what is right in this whole this whole area of being a being a young lion yeah i think it's really challenging uh i think most points in human history i guess there's always challenges um the the ambush of technology and pornography and transgender ideology makes this a very unique and strange time to be a young man um the exaggerated violence that we see with guys like andrew tate who um, this YouTube sensation, probably the most popular guy on the internet, and young women especially seem to adore this guy. He says he just converted, tragically converted to Islam, but he, uh, you know, he says things that are really sensible, and then he says things that are off the wall. And so it's the church really, and the saints provide uh, these examples, you know, like Saint uh, Francis Xavier, um, Saint Francis of Assisi. We just have Saint Joseph, obviously. And, and I would say, obviously, I, I also have always wanted to know what it is to be a man. Thoughtfully, consciously, I looked for role models, and, and I can say that I'm a catastrophic failure. Um, I, I uh, you know, we we act in an exaggerated way one moment, we fall down uh, the next. So it's obviously um, in an age with no guardrails and no, and when we're not surrounded by examples, it's very challenging. But I would say it's this. It's to be strong and kind. It's to be thoughtful. It's to be empathetic. It's to take your strengths and your weaknesses. You know, I'm reading this uh, uh, this this book. It's it's called The Guide to Heroes. It's by a Jesuit priest, a Spanish Jesuit priest from the 15th century. Amir. A guide. A, a guide to heroes. Yeah, oh, it's really cool, man. it's really an interesting book. Um, let me find the, the, the author's name. Wow. I just discovered it and I ordered all of his books. He has a lot of good things in there, but it's from it's from the 15th century. But he has some things that I think were flawed. He, he talks he talks in length about how to hide one's flaws, and obviously we don't want to create scandal. But he he talks in, in so I think well, we can harness our strengths to serve the vulnerable, but then at the same time we can. Uh, do what's even more daring than harnessing your strength to serve people. What's really daring is to present your weaknesses thoughtfully in a way that doesn't present scandal uh, to edify others. You know, um, yeah, I yeah gonna, I'm sorry. I was going to say, you know, um, in the man cave, that's what we do. We consider the, the man cave the cave of Adullam. You know where all the misfits showed up during the reign of King David. You know that they, they they people that owed money, people that were running from the law, and I always like to say maybe running from their mother-in-law too. All these guys showed up. They're all a bunch of misfits, and they formed each other, and God formed them. 
into being uh, the mighty men of valor. But a uh, Catholic cowboy priest, Father Bryce Lundgren, I love this man. Love this man. I got him connected with Sophie Institute, his new book, The Catholic Cowboy Way. He talks about what if I was riding my horse out, in the, out on the range with my buddy Zeke, not on the same horse, separate horses. If we were riding horses out there and I said to him, hey, Zeke, you know what? We need to be more vulnerable with one another. He'd kick the spear, spurs into the side of that horse and be gone. But if you said we need to be more raw and real, that's what we need. Men need to be with other men, to be formed by them, to be encouraged by them, to be challenged by them, and to realize in a way we're all bozos on the same bus. We're all facing the same issues, but we shouldn't be facing them alone. We need, we need to be real with each other, real in the right way, in the right place. But we need, and that's the that's the beauty of confession, dude. We yeah, get don't real. Use, yeah, if you told me, Barry, you wanted to be more vulnerable with me, I'd never answer your calls again. Yeah, I hear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's really daring to do that. You know, I just read um, a, a story about a soldier that wouldn't get out of a hole during a, an artillery barrage, and they had to get him out of this hole to retreat, or as we say in the army, advance to the rear. And, and nobody, <laughs> all these people were like trying to reach to get him out in a another soldier that had just been crushed by you know an old warrior an old soldier who had a ptsd and he jumped in the hole with the guy and he said he looked at him he said brother i've been in this hole before i know how to get out of it mm, and together they climb out of it and, and and that's it's you know a lot of us are in holes and so uh sometimes we think we're the only ones in a hole but uh, we're all in our little holes. We jump in a trench together and we can get out of it together. Mm. And that's what it is to be a man. And it's some of the most manly men I know uh, would have those. They would maybe the affectations for whatever reason you'd think they were effeminate. But the truth is they're extremely manly. And then there's mm. others that have these affectations, you know, of, of, of uber manliness. But at the root of it they're completely devoid of the virtues of what it is to be a man mm. so we 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 don't need to really affect the attributes the outer attributes of mass manliness but the, the, the like what you do bear what you've really built your whole apostolate around it's to really develop over time um the real virtue uh the real virtue of manliness and the reason we want that is obviously is to lead those around us to eternity with their creator that's the goal so we're in this foxhole and mm. out with sin and despair and doubt and the goal is to get as many people out of this foxhole through jesus christ to eternity with the trinity and 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 to for leaders to develop leaders you know in, um we're, we're all we're all we're, we're all on the same bus as i say but but we need to uh, challenge and encourage each other so that we can become valiant in time and we could do that with each other and then we can reach out and we can lead other men because because it's the men that it, it, when the men c take that natural place of, of of servant leadership and that natural place of protecting and and wanting to provide and nurturing and loving their children providing a, a castle they can live in that's protected so that they can so that they can flourish and so that their wife can flourish what could be better than that as a man but we have so many young men that are that when when i show up to speak at a at a at a, a conference like cindy and i will go to speak at a conference where there's men and women not just a men's conference we can't even get in the door we're, we're, we're surrounded immediately by women saying please tell the men we want them we need them to be men we're talking with jason jones we're gonna when we come back we'll talk a little bit more about uh, go a little bit deeper with him, how the Lord's, how he, he, you know, it's like he says, I don't really choose the battles, they choose me, but there's something really uh, a gnarly that he's doing right now that we need to hear about and pray for him. We'll be right back with Jason Jones and more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel the Moon Markham with another episode of Country Up, High Ground, Hill 700, any U.S. infantry officer worth his or her salt knows about the fearsome bloody battle when the 37th Infantry Division was tasked to take and then hold Hill 700 in the battle for the island of Bougainville in the South Pacific in November 1943. 
Hill 700 was the highest ground above an airbase utilized by the Army Air Force, key to the early strategy in retaking the Pacific from the Japanese. For thousands of years, armies have understood the tactical advantage of taking high ground to defeat their enemies. High ground has important spiritual and religious meanings. As followers of Christ, we should be the kind of Christian warriors, men and women who battle for the high ground for our own souls, and consequently for our families, churches, and communities, all for the glory of God. High ground Christians could get high-minded, and that's the danger, of course. With a lack of humility, high ground Christians are a pain in the arse and a discredit to the captain of their salvation. But moral and ethical stature embedded in humility are key in successfully standing for what's right, true, and good, and thus in achieving good for God, community, country, humanity, and yes, ourselves. For such folks, I stand before them and salute in respect. We all rally to spiritual warriors like those in Hebrews 11 Hall of Faith. Taking and holding high ground are strategic for your success and that of others. In doing so, others will follow in your footsteps, which means you're a leader. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. How does it how would it sound to you if you could come to Florida, to Cocoa Beach, Florida, uh, May 19th through the 21st and join with a bunch of other uh, men? Uh, I hate to call it, it's not a retreat and it's not a conference, it's it's a meetup. Uh, we're gonna be uh, having beer, we're gonna have uh, you know maybe shots of whiskey, uh, beer, cigars in the evenings and uh, and talk story and go deep with each other and uh and we'll have sessions where we where we go deeper with each other not so much teaching but just talking about certain subjects and getting deep and learning from each other we're also probably going to have full contact golf uh, session out there on the with our sandwiches out on the golf course no no uh no throat punches but uh we're gonna we're we're gonna have fun, but we're also gonna go deep. And so, go to our website deepadventure.com or the School of Manliness and uh, and sign up for the May nineteenth um, man cave meetup. We have our, our guest today, Jason Jones. Uh, Jason, one of the things I love to ask you about, and, and it's really uh, it really is become the nature of your sons. Is you there's a, when you I know your, your your children are growing, but I know there's a prayer that you pray after supper when your wife prays with the, your daughters and you pray with your sons what is that prayer that you pray yeah, with your you, sons? yeah you're exposing me as a heretic i mean it might make me a heretic but i i, I ask it, i ask that um that all my my children my spouse and my posterity that god would give them grace that they need to spend eternity with them so i, I don't know if that's a, a I, no, pray well, I, I know you I don't also know you also pray that they would oh, put, to put, put us between the vulnerable and the violent. Yeah, it's that's my men prayer. So there's the family prayer that we pray together every night, which is um, that that my children and my grandchildren and my posterity would have the grace they need and that they would correspond their life to that grace, that all of my descendants would be in eternity. Mm, praise God. Um, but then with my boys, yeah, we pray that, that God would always thrust us between the vulnerable and the violent. And and what's mysterious is, you know, God answers prayers in a strange way. So dangerous I, you know, prayer. That's a dangerous prayer. 
Yeah. That's a very dangerous prayer because God heard it. God's going to answer it. And I think God loves dangerous prayers. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're seeing that act that out in your life. (laughs) But we're seeing that right now in your life. Tell us what what, what you're doing in the next. I think you're leaving in a couple of days. Yeah, I'm leaving in uh, three days. And I really can't say who I'm meeting with, but I'm traveling to the Middle East and I'll be meeting with folks that have power over very vulnerable communities. Um, and I'm in negoti- I'm meeting with them in a way that we could work together to ameliorate the suffering um, that this, con- you know, it's, I'm going to meet with the con- leaders of a country that's extremely vulnerable. The Christians are very vulnerable and other communities are very vulnerable. And after the trip, I, I, I hopefully will be able to tell a lot about how the trip went and, and where I went exactly and who I met with, I think it'd be quite shocking to folks who I'm going to meet with, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's got answers. And I never, until you brought it up, I never really realized that. Yeah, this is probably the fruit of, uh, you know, 15 years of praying. A, da- me, a dangerous prayer. Thrust me. I actually asked my 16 year old son if he wanted to come and he passed. <laughs> If you um, asked me to come, I would pass. You know, I know. Yeah. I know more than I know the, more than what you're saying. Uh, you know of what you're, of what you're, what you're. I'll, I'll tell you what's exciting. After that, I'm going to Spain to a hospital that's run by um, the personal prelature of Opus Dei, and this hospital in Spain, one of the best hospitals in the world, will be providing um, a group of Afghan girls that were wounded in an ISIS attack of their school. They're a Hazara minority girls. They're, the girls are Hazara. And this 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 hospital is going to be receiving them. I'll be at the airport when the girls arrive to get surgeries and everything they need from the best doctors in the world. They're probably the best hospital in the world. It's in Spain, and um, and that's a real grace. And then from there, I'm going to Man- I'm going to London to meet with members of Parliament on getting visas for Afghans to the UK. Then I'm going to Manchester, England, where my buddy Dave Light, the great a boxer, devout Catholic boxer from New Zealand, from Auckland, is fighting for the cruiserweight championship of the world. And check this out, Bear, on his walkout shorts, he's going to have the Vulnerable People Project logo on his walkout shorts. Oh, wow. Wow. Tell us about the the Vulnerable People Project. How can people help you? Yeah, it's the program of my organization, HERO, the Human Rights Education and Relief Organization. We have two main programs, Movie to Movement and the Vulnerable People Project. Our mission is to stand between the vulnerable and the violence. And VPP does that through um, aggressive, creative, um, influence campaigns to change public opinion and the opinions of of leadership in different countries and agencies to serve the vulnerable. An example of creativity is having this this month, we'll have an MMA fighter fighting for championship with VPP on his logo and a boxer. So we use celebrities, we use athletes, We use politicians, um, but we also do direct aid when the rest of the world is left. So when the world leaves, we show up. We we really don't like to be a relief organization, but we discovered when communities are in the most extreme danger, all the major organizations in the world with compliance lawyers (laughs) leave. So that's when we show up. And that's why we've been in Afghanistan now for 18 months. As far as we know, the only organization that operates in every state, in every province, across every corner of Afghanistan. Let's take a moment to pray for you, okay? Yeah. Lord, we we uh, ask you to protect Jason and all those that are part of this mission. We ask you to close doors and to close eyes that need to be closed. And we ask you to open eyes and open doors that need to be opened that he would find himself always uh, under the shadow of your wing and that you would lift him, lift him up on eagle's wings, Lord, and move this, this, this man into uh, the heart of your will. And I pray that those that he would meet with, that they, he would find favor with them and that they would, uh, they would uh, be responsive and uh, help him to get help to the people who need it the most. Protect him and bless him. Give him joy in the midst of the fight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we're, talk- we're talking to our friend, our, our friend Jason Jones. I'm almost speechless because uh, so often when, when uh, I, I find myself, sometimes it happens to me too, when I'll tell people what I'm up to, it's almost like their eyes go blurry 
and they just kind of zone out like, no, that's not really happening. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, and, my, my wife tells me not to talk to people about what I do. Because they don't, they don't, it's hard to really grasp. But and probably be, is because you're just a normal guy. But that's, I think that yeah, every one of us, every one of us, an, a common person, every common person is called to do uncommon things. It may not be this type of thing. But speak, speak to the men and women out here, there that, that know they have a nudge for the, from the Holy Spirit. It may not be flying into Afghanistan, but every one of us have an uncommon calling, a special calling and purpose. Yeah, Mother Angelica said it best, right? When she wanted to start EWTN, um, all the smart people told her she couldn't do it. And she said, I was just too stupid to know that I couldn't do it, so I did it. And um, there's, you know, I always say that nothing is rocket science, not even rocket science. Uh, a government agency wanted to meet with me about what I'm doing in Afghanistan. They said, how are you doing this? And I said, I make a to-do list. I put my tasks <laughs> in complete order and then I do them. And I don't skip dominoes. The dominoes have to fall in order. I have to check off the tasks on the to-do list in order. And I pursue my goals with passion with an order and intensity. And as Catholics, we have grace. Uh, when people come to work for me, and I think it's really annoying sometimes for people on the periphery of our work, because it's confusing. But when people come to work for us and they say, you know, I, I say, I, first thing you need to know about uh, the, our organization is we do not do anything. I mean, we really do not do anything. God does things all around us. And the world is going to give us the credit. And this is just the reality. So it's, it's uh, you talk about being a normal person. Uh, the folks I'm going to meet with in the Middle East, I asked uh, my friend who arranged the meeting, I said, you know, how did I get this meeting? Like, why do they want to meet with me? And they said, because you're a genuine person. And they see that you are an authentic, genuine person without affectation. And that you are saying what you're doing and you're doing what you're saying and your motives are there for the world to see. And they judge you as an honest man. So I think that those of us who are just simple lay Catholics, um, <laughs> we can do anything. St. Escriva in the way says, and I, 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 I have his book that. right there on the, right on the top of my desk. I'm reading. Yeah. He, he says in the day. way, like what aren't the strategies of the apostles and the saints good enough for you? Uh. Something like that. So when I want to be creative or strategic or manipulative or clever, you know, clever, clever, conniving, overly, doesn't work. Conniving, yeah, yeah, threatening. And even bullying. when you do that, you don't get God's will. We got to take a break, Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and then when you do that, you're really not getting to see God work and do his stuff. We'll be yeah, right exactly. back with Jason Jones. You asked for more cowbell. Jason Jones is in the house. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wastick adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to 
the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure Channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're so stoked because season four, the long-awaited season four of Long Ride Home, 12 new episodes, all filmed in Hawaii, is going to begin to air on EWTN very, very soon. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and, jo and join our newsletter, find out more about it uh, as it as it, uh, as it becomes more available. And every week you get, uh, with the newsletter, a video of that weekend's show, even before the show comes out. So Jason Jones, if you want to see how handsome he is, uh, you can uh, you can sign up for the newsletter and you get the YouTube version of the show emailed to you. But what's really cool about that is then you can use that to evangelize and share with your friends. And also, if you go to the Bear Wozniak Adventure and you become a mama bear or you join the man cave, um, you also get access to all uh, 34 episodes of Long Ride Home, uh, the YouTube version, but it's a private link. So you can share it with your friends and your family that way too. So uh, go to go to the bear, deepadventure.com and uh, sign up for our, our weekly newsletter. We have Jason Jones here in the house. Hey, Jason, you know, the thing about being, people go, well, I never really see God move. Well, I pray and I, and I ask for God to do stuff and I just never see God move. Well, part of seeing God move is for you to move. You know, and so there, there's the, 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 there's surfers, you know, we, we, we paddle into a wave. We don't just wait for the wave to catch us. We catch it. So you pray and say, Lord, what is your will? And you might sense a little bit of a nudge. And I just love what you said. You start making a list. Like I do that. I have my list. And then it, when it becomes a project, I get a blue notebook out, and I and I and then I have tabs of each section that I need to work on. But I start, I go to work. I get a little nudge from the Holy Spirit, and sometimes as I proceed, I sense this isn't. I don't really have that sense of God's presence here. I don't feel God's grace here. This may not be the right thing. This may not be. This may be the right thing, but not at the right time. This may be something that God's given me for the future. Like in Habakkuk, it says, "Write the vision down in big in letters big enough so that one who's reading it can run while he's reading." It's an image of a, a courier running from town to town to announce the, the the results of a great battle. Write the vision down. Write it down. And if the vision tarries, wait for it, for it will surely come. So to take a pencil or a pen in your hand and to begin write down is very, very powerful. God wrote down Scripture. You know, it's a powerful, powerful thing to write. If God's giving you a nudge, begin to write down these three or four, seven or eight or nine or ten things that you think, I, I could do this. And then you pray on it. And you say, this is the one I, I'm going to focus on right now. And you begin to go down that path. And maybe the Lord's saying, it's the right thing. This isn't the right time. But in time, as you practice following those nudges, maybe it's I'm going to I'm going to run for city council or something bodacious like teaching confirmation class. Or maybe I'm going to go work at uh, uh, to pray in front of the Planned Parenthood or, or whatever it may be. You know what it is. Maybe as a woman, God just calling you to go and hold newborn babies at the hospital. Who knows what it is? Uh, maybe it's to become involved with your, the, the local school board or, or, or as a parent uh, c coaching a football team. These little nudges, pursue them. Because when you do that, especially when there's obstacles, I love to do it when it seems impossible because that's when you get to see God do stuff. When you move in God's will, you get to see God do stuff. If you're on the peripheral of his will, you don't because you're, like, you're not under the spout where the blessings come out. you got to... Move and watch, and then and then partnering with God, and then when when He loves it when things become really hard, because He wants you to know that He can come in like the Calvary. But my mother used to call him a swashbuckler to save the day, and you know what I'm talking about, Jason. What are experiences like that you've had where you you said this can't happen, this can't happen without God, and then you see God just open doors. Yeah, well, getting the hospital in Spain to provide emergency surgical care in Spain to give visas. It's just how is that, you know, um, things like this all of the time. Because um, God willed it. God willed it. 
God did, yeah. And you know, sometimes um, God calls us to do things and and there'll be failures all around in the midst of it. And that's just the way it is. You volunteer at a pregnancy center and a girl chooses abortion after you've counseled her, it's depressing. You pray at a sidewalk, you're a sidewalk counselor and some lunatic punches you in the nose or I'm trying to evacuate an Afghan family. And as I'm on the phone with them, the Taliban shoots the chi a child in the stomach and the family has to rush to the hospital and miss the flight out. These things, you know, are it's real. So um, when you in the apostolic life, when it stops feeling good is when Catholics should keep going. Mm. And, you know, when people ask me, why am I still doing things in Afghanistan? Um, and aren't we done with that? I'm like, you know, the world has forgotten Afghanistan. This is a quote from Mother Cabrini in the 19th century. The world has for forgotten Afghanistan. So I remember uh, when the world forgets is when I'm there. On Palm mm. Sunday, I might I might be at the I, you know what I'm doing on Palm Sunday, mm. Bear. I'm fishing. I got the I got the lake to myself. Um, but on Good Friday, I want to be at the cross. How's mm. that? Mm. How's that? And I think the Catholic apostolic life is the cross. Mm. Let the crowds mm. be there for Palm Sunday. There's always Palm Sunday. Uh, Jesus doesn't need you there to wave them in with the people who are going to nail it. Praise God. Plan. Wow. Jeez. So I would say the one thing I've learned is when it seems imprudent, when the donors are lost interest, when the media is left, well, then that's when we as Catholics, that's the uniqueness of the Catholic apostolate in the world. And that's the uniqueness of the Catholic in the family and in your community. When, you know, your coworker gets caught stealing because he has an opioid addiction and everyone hates him. That's when you call him, right? So there are all these opportunities to be with people when it doesn't seem prudent, when everyone leaves uh, the site, when, you know, yeah, like in my own family, I have family with drug, people with drug problems, when that relative has stolen from every relative to support their habit and no one wants to talk to them and they've stolen from you and you don't want to talk to them. That's where you really need to be thoughtful and creative and muster up the energy, not to allow yourself to be exploited or to or, or support them in a way that hurts themselves, but to find a way to be with them in a way that's useful. So I'm so grateful for the church. I'm so grateful for the saints. I'm so grateful, for, you know, that it, it I, I would be so lost because I'm such a broken and addled person. Um, like I say, I love that from Saint Escriva. Like, aren't the way that like lie is isn't what the saints did good? The apostles did good enough. Like they, in two hundred years, got the church to every corner of the known world, at the time, and yet I need to be conniving or I'm I'm prone to bully. Like when people get in between me and my goals, I have a thing I say which I shouldn't say, which is if you have to choose between getting between me and my goal, or a, a bull, a cow in heat and a bull, grab the, grab the cow by the backside, you know, um, but. But no, that's not it. <laughs> I need to look to the. Well, God, the, uh, God loves the iron will determination. That's a, that's yeah. iron that he puts he puts into especially into his saints. You know, there's an iron will determination, but it's a determination to follow God's will and to and to you know and to move in His grace. We have a couple more minutes. Um, how can people help you, Jason? What what can they do to to help? Well, you know, the best way to help us right now is we have Christian safe houses for Christians in Afghanistan. It's two hundred fifty dollars to support a family of seven through four months. A two hundred fifty four a two hundred fifty dollar donation at thegreatcampaign.org will fund a special forces soldier and his family, or a Christian and his family. They're in hiding. They can't work. Um, we're hoping that the government of Afghanistan grants amnesty to all these folks, and that it can enter society. And we see a loosening of of what these pe people are suffering. Excuse me, but yeah, go to thegreatcampaign.org. Uh, $250 gets a family through four months, but $7 is, I think that's a day. $7, go and donate $7 and you've, you've helped fund a family a day. We're a very small team across Afghanistan. The communities we serve are our team. Mm -hmm. So we have hundreds of people that work for us at no cost because the communities we serve are the communities that do the work. If you go to the greatcampaign.org, you can actually see the videos of the women's medical centers we've built, the wells we've drilled, and the massive We've drilled, uh, uh, we're about probably, we're almost to 1.5 million meals delivered since Christmas Eve, our Christmas campaign. Um, and we have the Coal for Christmas campaign, and now we've launched the Spring to Life campaign to keep these families alive through summer. Once we get them to summer, things will be okay, and then we have to gear up for next winter. But we're also working at resettling. 
We opened up a Rome office so we can resettle the Christians from Afghanistan into Europe, not just the United States and Central and South America. Become a part of our team. I think it's, my apostle is very unique. What, what's, the, apostle, what's the name of, what's the website again? It's thegreatcampaign.org. The, the organization is the Vulnerable People Project. The website comes from St. John Paul the Great, who asked us to mobilize a great campaign in the service yes, of the vulnerable. Yes, praise God. And that's, I bought the domain as soon as I read that in the 90s. I wasn't even <laughs> Catholic yet. But as an atheist committed to serving the vulnerable, I said, wow, he, the, this pope as an atheist just gave me a way to organize all of my efforts from the child in the womb to the child in Darfur. The great campaign. <laughs> it's the great campaign. So, so Jason, what is, it, what is the website one more time? TheGreatCampaign.org. Well, I got to say, Jason, we miss you here in Hawaii. Well, I called you at two in the morning because I just had surgery. It was two in the morning of my time. I knew yeah. you'd be up. I yeah. just had surgery from my hobby of Muay Thai, and I know surfing has given you a few surgeries. So I was on this medicine, couldn't let me sleep, and I was watching the Waterman on Duke, who I know is your uh, someone you really look up to, and I had to call you to see if you watched it. I dream about Hawaii. Once a week, I have these very vivid dreams, yeah. lucid dreams of I'm walking around Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> and visiting friends and eating and I think they're a grace from God. I, I do pray for the ability to buy locate. And if I can, yeah. one of you, you can't always do, you can't Dukes. do you can't do that? No, no. What if oh, you would my be goodness. A I would be a Duke. I thought you were a saint. Drinking a beer all the time. And then the other <laughs> me would be in Iraq or wherever, but Oh, you just got it. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to get more holy, Jason. I'm. I'm so disappointed. In you. Hey, we're already past our time. We're talking with Jason Jones, thegreatcampaign.org. Uh, if you want to hear more about from Jason Jones, just just message us uh, in the YouTube version of of this show. More cowbell. Till next week. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.